Between the years of 2013 and 2017, a series of discoveries and recovery missions were made along a rocky exposure of the Wessex Formation, which has eroded out of an area located just east of Chilton, Chine, one kilometer from Brystone. Still embedded in the rock layer were the brain case, snout tip, and tail of a large theropod dinosaur. Within chunked and slumped hunks of sandstone, lying on the foreshore came the brain case, snout tip, and slice of eye bone from another huge theropod dinosaur. Turns out, the two are related. Spinosaurs are some of the most unusual of the usual dinosaurs. Sure, they clearly aren't as bizarre as the Oviraptorosaurs, Therizinosaurs, or Alvarosaurs, but they took what the theropods did best and ramped it up to 11. Spinosaurs, helmed by their mascot, Spinosaurus, were a group of long-snouted, burly-armed, heavy-clawed theropod dinosaurs of large size that hung around large bodies of still or moving water. They were adapted for catching fish, but were big enough to go after just about anything. The group is also divided into the earlier, smaller, baryonyx-type Spinosaurs, who had a lot more teeth, and the larger, weirder, Spinosaurus-type Spinosaurs. The material of the two individuals were collected as a joint cooperation between hobbyist fossil collectors, museum staff, and academics. That museum being the Dinosaur Isle Museum, of course. So, one individual contained the tip of the snout, the top of the skull, and the brain case. These are some of the best possible parts of the skull to find. They can help you identify all the bullet points you might need to define the critter as its own unique critter as well as where it might place on its family tree. The snout tip gave information on the number of teeth. The brain case gave information on the very specific kinds of bones that connect the head to the neck. And the top of the skull showed that this critter had bosses, or hard gnarly growths, behind and above the eye sockets, rather similar to the tyrannosaurs. However, this thing was a spinosaur, specifically what's called a baryonychine spinosaur as it's more closely related to the heavy-clawed Baryonyx than it is to the sail-backed Spinosaurus. The research team gave it the name Ceratosuchops inferiodios, Ceratosuchops meaning horned crocodile face, and inferiodios meaning hell heron. The second specimen also just so happens to have all the really important parts of the skull, the snout tip, the brain case, and what's called the preorbital, a bone that rests in front of the eye sockets. On top of that, people from the Dinosaur Isle Museum found a series of backbones which actually belonged to a tail. After analysis of where they came from and what rock they were in, the researchers found it belonged not only to the same rocks as the other Spinosaur fossils, but belonged to this second specimen as well. This guy was also a Spinosaur, and also a Baryonychine Spinosaur. They gave it the name Riperovenator Milnere. Riperovenator meaning river hunter, and Milnere referring to Angela Milner, the paleontologist who described Baryonyx and who sadly passed away recently. Baryonyx was the last Spinosaur found from the UK, and that was all the way back in the 80s. At the time, Baryonyx was an oddball, but now it's the basis for a lot of the understanding of the Spinosaurus family tree. That's mostly because of how complete Baryonyx is compared to how fragmentary most other Spinosaurs are. I have shirts, stickers, and more available on the Edge Redbubble site. Think you'd find something you like? Click the link in the description and the comment section below to get some really cool nerd stuff. Speaking of fragmentary remains, a lot of people might have the justified suspicion of how the hell two specimens that are made up of only a few pieces could be good enough to name and classify not one, but two genera and species on. So, just about every fossil specimen ever found is fragmentary. There's an extremely minuscule chance that all the bones of a given skeleton survive long enough to fossilize, and then survive untouched as a fossil till we find it. That being said, basically every single dinosaur skeleton ever found is missing something. On top of that, most dinosaur fossils are missing their heads. Heads don't like to stay attached to the body for long, and are made up of a bunch of separate bones. Once all the yummy body goop degrades, the skull is free to roam around. Most super fragmentary dinosaur specimens are therefore missing their heads. The heads also happen to hold a lot of really good information for naming, classifying, organizing, and separating specific genus and species. 
These two new Spinosaurs happened to preserve the very pieces that would be needed to do this. So, despite missing most of their bodies, the science works out that they are distinct from all other Spinosaurs. Okay, so how can two Spinosaurs that were probably somewhat similar to one another live in the same time and place? Wouldn't they compete? Well, the picture is much broader than that. Historically, scientists figured that each early to late Cretaceous ecosystem that had a Spinosaur only had about one major genus. That meant that any bits and pieces that were too fragmentary to describe were lumped into already known Spinosaurs from their given area. Over the last 20 or so years, it's been found that each of these ecosystems held a far more diverse cast of Spinosaurs than previously thought and that the differences seen in the fragmentary bits and pieces really did add up to unique differences in the ecology of Spinosaurs. But how did they get along? They may have been able to live side by side by not eating each other's food. The fact that they lived with one another means they most likely occupied a different ecological niche. What each of those niches was is probably something that can never fully be understood, especially with dinosaurs this fragmentary overall, or dinosaurs that appear super similar to one another on the skeletal level. Dr. Darren Nash, one of the many authors of the new study, points out that the very characteristics that the team could use to separate the two new Spinosaurs from one another and all other Spinosaurs are the kind of characteristics that can indicate that they were doing different things. That about wraps it up for these guys. According to Darren, more research on UK Spinosaurs may appear before year's end, so stay tuned for that. For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons, Thea Svensson, Staniforth Hopkins, Dinosaur, and Arda Bayer, as well as my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons, Henry Brennan, Danny Van Heck, Dana Manchester, Chris Frampton, and Admin.